Hey everyone, the name's Eric Thor, and I'm here today to announce uh, my new ebook and uh, to try to show my attempt to bring some new relevance into Carl Jung's works on the eight Jungian functions. I believe that we need to bring Carl Jung back from the grave into the 21st century. I, begin, I believe that his theories are still valid, still interesting, still fascinating. But to Carl Jung himself, the book was never meant to be a science, and uh, it has been misinterpreted as such, even though it wasn't. My whole scheme of, of typology is merely a, a sort of orientation. What? It's not real? It's on orientation? Uh, namely, there is such a factor as introversion, there is such a factor as extraversion. The classification of individuals means nothing, nothing at all. But I like my box! This is only um, uh, the instrumentarium yes. for the psychology, practical psychologists yes. uh, to explain, for instance, a husband to a wife. Okay, so Carl Jung didn't see his works as a science. He saw it as a men means to understand people, a means to understand people better than we do today. And to me, stereotypes and boxing people in, that's the opposite of understanding people. So I can understand why Carl Jung sees so many issues with it. I mean, are you a Bambi or are you a Pusheen? Take this 10-step test to find out. When personality psychology becomes purely about classification, I think it ceases to have its value in society. Its value must come from finding out how people, what people love to do, what people find meaningful, what people find interesting. It can't be about what people just are at the moment, what we just happen to be right now. If we want to develop self-development theory and growth theory, and if we want to understand traumas and psychological issues, then of course we need something deeper that goes beyond stereotyping and categorization. When you box people in, you start losing the ability to provide helpful information on how people can grow and how they can develop themselves. If we want to give new relevance relevance to uh, personality psychology, then personality psychology has to be the study about how people find flow, what makes people happy, what makes people more positive and optimistic, what helps people deal with negative issues and problems and traumas, what helps people get back their sense of passion and enthusiasm for what they do, and what makes us feel like our life is fulfilling and meaningful, like we're doing something important. Uh, namely sensation tells you that there is something. Thinking, roughly speaking, tells you uh, what it is. Feeling tells you whether it is agreeable or not mm -hmm. to be accepted or not accepted or rejected. Yes. And intuition out there is a, a difficulty. Yes. You don't know ordinarily how intuition works. So when a man has a hunch, you can't tell exactly who he got at that hunch or where that hunch comes from. The Myers-Briggs type indicator has gotten so far off from Carl Jung's original works and theories on according to functions that the Myers-Briggs society has essentially invented eight new cognitive functions. And I'm not saying that these eight new functions are inaccurate, I'm saying that they are different. When Carl Jung spoke of an introvert and an intuitive type, he didn't speak of INFJs or INTJs. He might as well have just as well been speaking about INTPs and INFPs. But what the Myers-Briggs Society did was they invented a new degree of functions with judging and perceiving at the front. They divided people based on if they were judging and perceiving types and they saw the judging and the perceiving type as the most influential on determining which cognitive functions you used. Then, after doing that, the Myers-Briggs type indicator revamped the cognitive function descriptions, but essentially rewriting the cognitive function descriptions to rather be about how you used uh, thinking or the feeling or the sensing or the intuitive style as a judging compared to a perceiving type. And it makes sense then that the intuitive perceiving type is suddenly a creative type where the uh, intuitive and extroverted type in Carl Jung's work were more about uh, what was happening in the moment, new possibilities, what was emerging from the society, new patterns, new leads, new clues. 
In the Myers-Briggs system, it's all about brainstorming. It's all about generating possibilities. What if that? What if that? What if that? But in Carl Jung's works, this did not exist. This was not the extroverted intuitive. So essentially, he might have described characteristics that were true to ENFJs and ENTJs as well as they were true to ENFPs and ENTP. And I'm not the first person to have noticed this. This is essentially why Socionics got rid of the judging and the perceiving in their new letter combinations, I-L-E, I-A-E, E-I-I. They essentially didn't understand where Isabella Briggs got this new letter from, because this was not Carl Jung. Still, I believe that Isabella Briggs was onto something. When she developed the judging and the perceiving trait, she discovered a dichotomy that is just as important as introversion and extroversion. She described and she discovered that there were linear proactive thinkers who were so-called judgers, more organized, more thorough. And there were adaptive, uh, flexible and option generating perceiving types that were in many ways more free flow and more carefree. Isabella Briggs began rewriting the cognitive functions because, according to her J and P, the letters and the functions should be used differently by different judging and perceiving types. What she ended up doing, however, was uh, in many ways uh, forming a new concept, two functions that were <laughs> unrelated to Carl Jung's original theories. And what I'm essentially doing in my new book is I'm putting the introverts and the extroverts and the introvert and extroverted functions separate from the Myers-Briggs eight functions. And I'm describing what functions INFPs and INFJs share, what functions INTPs and INTJs share, what functions ISTPs and ISTJs share. Because truly there are similarities between these types. It's not a coincidence that INFPs are likely to mistype as INFJs. It's because to 50% of a degree there are similarities and the Myers-Briggs society fails to recognize these differences. And essentially what the Myers-Briggs type indicate their institutions are trying to do is they're trying to use science and statistics to prove that the theories, that the types they say, the boxes they've made are correct when Carl Jung didn't think they were and the Carl Jung never intended the theory to be used in that way. Essentially, if you're trying to be scientific in your approach to personality psychology, then you have to get beyond categorization and instead focus on identifying flow for each personality type. Yes, that's right. Instead of saying an INFJ only uses a set of cognitive functions, realize that every type uses all functions and realize that the difference is not how much they use it or how often they use it, but how much they enjoy and value using it. There is scientific merit to discussing people's values and beliefs and motivations because often our motivations tend to remain even though we can change a lot throughout our life. The fact of the matter is that our values and our motivations and what we find inherently important and meaningful, that tends to remain the same throughout most of our life. And if it changes, it changes slowly. But our behavior and how we are in each moment may change from situation to situation. All you have to do to become a different person is join a different group or go to work or put on different outfit for <laughs> where depending on what you want to do. And when you're focused on purely observing yourself and your current behavioral tendencies, you'll find that you're changing all the time. So if I can do anything with my books and my writing and my articles, it's, I hope that I can combat the stereotypes and that fixation with categorization and to move towards an understanding, a deeper understanding of what flow is, what happiness is, what the good life is for each person, for each, uh, depending on which interests and motivations you have. If there's something I hope to do with my articles and my writing, it's that I want to illuminate different people and different approaches, modern approaches to typology, different perspectives from different gifted and intelligent and bright scientists and individuals in the personality psychology communities. 
I want to refer you to brilliant minds that have made great contributions to changing the value of the personality psychology. Uh, and I hope that if we all bump our heads together and work together, we can create a modern alternative to the Myers-Briggs type indicator that is more accurate, more meaningful, less stereotyping, and less prone to uh, faulty or incorrect beliefs about personality psychology and how the human mind works. So this book is a deep dive into neo jungian typology as developed by Christian Jansen and the works of Carl Jung, <laughs> developed early in the 1900s. So it's basically uh, an effort to uh, start uh, inspiring people to call themselves neo jungians and to start working towards uh, making a difference in the typology community. Because there are a lot of things that need to change. And truly I can only do it together with all of you.